The whole Bible story in ten minutes. How happy will it make God, our Creator, when He hears that, like Stephen did in Acts chapter seven, we understood and spoke the whole Bible story without getting it wrong, without turning from it to the right or to the left, without crossing the line in front of a crowd, and within ten minutes. The sixty-six books of the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, is one story, a prehistory from the native country of the universe, the heart of God, is the start of the Genesis story of God's creation, Adam's and Eve's fall, Noah's flood, and the dramatic divine self-identification as a multi-generational God. The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God of Sarah, Rebecca, Rachel, and Leah. God called Abraham God's friend and tested his obedience in a burnt offering on Mount Moriah. Isaac reaped one hundred times during famine. Jacob established the foundation for the twelve tribes through his sons. Joseph entered Egypt to birth a nation. Four hundred years later, the Hebrew people leave Egypt after the first Passover. The outward reason for Exodus was Egypt's persecution and enslavement. The real reason for Exodus was to form a covenant between God and the Israelites, to establish a kingdom of priests, a dream for all nations. Leviticus is a textbook for holy citizens in a kingdom of priests, including how to prepare the five types of offerings. Numbers is the story of the manna generation who were educated over forty years in the desert by Moses. Deuteronomy is the story of the manna generation's graduation in the desert. Joshua is the story of the founding of a kingdom of priests in Canaan, with the forty-eight towns for the Levites at its center. Judges is the story of the three hundred and fifty years under the judges' rule, when the first step and second step punishments of famine and plunder, as recorded in Leviticus, came upon Israel. Ruth is the success story of education in a kingdom of priests in the midst of the judges' rule. Samuel puts an end to the dark period of judges through the birth of the Mizpah generation that ignites the flames of a kingdom of priests. Saul becomes the first king of Israel, and the clash between Saul and Samuel was the first of many feuds between a prophet and a king. A shepherd, musician, and giant slayer named David is anointed with holy oil three times to become king, and he shows true loyalty to a kingdom of priests by preparing for the construction of the Jerusalem temple, for which he is given the title God's servant. Prayers and psalms by David are recorded that opened the gateway to heaven. As well as the story of Job, of whom God boasted for his unyielding faith, Solomon completes the construction of the temple and writes Proverbs, Song of Songs, and Ecclesiastes. After Solomon's death, Israel's north and south kingdoms are forced to divide for two hundred years. During that time, Elijah, Elisha, Amos, and Hosea. Cry out for the people to return to God, while Jonah showcases God's heart towards all nations through the three-day miracle. North Israel is destroyed by Assyria's army in 8th century BC, despite the many prophets who were sent to persuade Israel to return to God. At the same time, prophets Isaiah and Micah are sent by God to South Judah. To prophesy about the Messiah and his birth in Bethlehem, one hundred and fifty years later, when South Judah is destroyed by Babylon's army, prophets Zephaniah, Habakkuk, Nahum, and Joel are appointed to comprehensively evaluate the five hundred years of Israel's monarchy. During this time, 
Jeremiah prophesies the third step punishment of a kingdom of priests upon Israel to unfold in Babylon for 70 years, as recorded in Leviticus. Punishment, education, Sabbath, lifespan of empire, as well as prophesying a new covenant written on the heart, not on tablets of stone. To the returned captives from Babylon, God gifts 1 and 2 Chronicles as motivation to rebuild Jerusalem. During the 70 years of Babylonian captivity, the people are reborn through the word of God with the help of Ezekiel. Daniel's four visions sketch out the change of imperial rule from Babylon, Persia, Hellas to Rome and compares this upheaval to the kingdom of God that will stand forever. The Babylonian Empire falls to Persia just as God promised, and the Persian Empire invests in the Levant region by facilitating the reconstruction of the Jerusalem Temple through Zerubbabel, Haggai, and Zechariah, along with the returned captives. Meanwhile, the Jews who remain in Persia are threatened with death due to Haman the Amalekite's wicked scheme but manage to overcome this disaster through Queen Esther's political savvy. Ezra then leads the second return of captives to Jerusalem and sets the foundation for the Sanhedrin assembly. Nehemiah leads the third return of captives to reconstruct the Jerusalem walls. One thousand years after the founding of a kingdom of priests, God makes known his love towards Israel through Malachi and promises to send Elijah to turn the heart of the parents to their children and the heart of the children to their parents. God is then silent for 400 years. In between BC and AD, Jesus Christ is born in Bethlehem to the supreme delight of angels and shepherds. Jesus teaches God's unending love during his three years on earth and values one soul more precious than the whole universe. At times, Jesus becomes exhausted from showing God's love to the people day and night. Jesus is a pillar to the weak, an advocate for the poor, a healer to the sick and wounded, and a friend to Samaritans, tax collectors, and sinners. During Jesus' last week, Jesus turns his last Passover meal into Holy Communion in fulfillment of the New Covenant. After standing trial before the Sanhedrin Assembly and Pontius Pilate, Jesus is sentenced to be crucified on the Roman Empire's legendary torture tool and turns it into a door to heaven itself. The moment Jesus cried, It is finished on the cross, the curtain of the Jerusalem temple ripped in two. In fulfilling the laws and the prophets, Jesus reigns victorious on the cross once for all by his own blood and becomes the new and living way through the veil as he embodies the good news of God's kingdom. Three days after Jesus' crucifixion, Jesus resurrects from his grave and gives his great commission. Go and make disciples of all peoples. The Pentecost experience of the Holy Spirit paves the way for the disciple era and the establishment of the Jerusalem Council to spread the good news of God's kingdom and strengthen the church despite threats from the Sanhedrin assembly. On his sixth post resurrection appearance, Jesus appears to Paul on his way to Damascus and Paul is called to become an apostle for all nations. Paul accompanies Barnabas, who is sent by the Jerusalem church on their first missionary journey to Asia Minor. Two years later, the Jerusalem council meet to discuss the issue of circumcision raised by the Antioch church. The council rules that the only way to salvation is through the cross of Christ. Also. Paul is acclaimed as a loving brother to the standard of Barnabas during this meeting. Paul's team embarks on their second and third missionary journeys and sends letters to churches in Thessalonica, Galatia, Corinth and Rome, 
which are meant for public hearings, not private readings. Towards the end of their third missionary journey, Paul's team decides to spread the word by traveling across Rome to Spain, a place considered to be the ends of the world in those days. When they inform the Jerusalem Church of this plan, the Jerusalem Council advises Paul first to visit the Jerusalem Temple. But Paul is cornered by his own people who want to kill him. A Roman commander rescues Paul and strategizes to hold another Sanhedrin trial to help Paul attempt at a final persuasion. When the Sanhedrin assembly's threats reach dangerous heights, Paul ostensibly and avowedly confesses his belief in resurrection, which splits the Sadducees and the Pharisees and makes his escape. That night, Paul is sent to Caesarea under the protection of the Roman commander and is held under trial by Governor Felix, which keeps Paul captive for a further two years. Paul is subsequently held under trial by the new governor Festus and ends up using his Roman citizenship when threats by the Sanhedrin assembly become unbearable to be sent to Rome as a prisoner on deck to be tried by the Roman emperor. While waiting for the emperor's trial for two years under house arrest in Rome, Paul preaches the good news of God's kingdom and writes Ephesians, Colossians, Philippians and Philemon. When Paul is released for a short while, he embarks on yet another missionary journey. In AD 64, a great fire sweeps over Rome. About 200 Christian leaders and first-generation evangelists are accused of starting the fire and are brutally massacred. Paul also realises that his time is near and writes his final letter of last will and testament to Timothy. At the same time, first-generation evangelists write to second-generation evangelists, Hebrews, 1 and 2 Peter and Jude before their untimely deaths. The letters are written to spur on second generation faithful to fight the righteous fight under the Roman Empire's persecution of Christians and to preach the gospel to the ends of the earth in the face of martyrdom. St. John outlives all the other first generation evangelists for a further 30 years and looks after second-generation evangelists who face deadly persecution by the Roman Empire. St. John records 1, 2 and 3 John and proclaims that God is love. St. John also introduces the Lamb of God and the new heavens and the new earth to the seven churches in Asia Minor and closes with the story of Jesus' rapturous return in Revelation. Opening your Bible opens miracles. We will multiply our faith and churches through the Tong Dok revival movement in the 21st century, through God's Word, the Bible. God's story is the story of life and our life story. Amen.